Thank you so much for the opportunity. So this is a collaboration work at the Computational Biology Institute at George Washington University. A brief, you know, folk, uh, of what we do in my lab is with the high throughput technologies, we can measure many different omics, and our goal is to see if we can get a better picture using integrating these different omics data, including genomics, metabolomics, proteomics, and viral genomes as well. So in the, the objective or, uh, or NSF proposal was to develop a computational platform that includes two set of, uh, two different sets, one analytical approaches to investigate, analytical approaches and softwares to investigate COVID-19 related omics data. So as you've seen earlier in the different you know, presentation, the main source of this pandemic is the virus and we are focusing on the genome of virus as a resource to, to investigate how um, the virus behaves and if there are specific proteins or regions in the genome of the virus that we need to target for vaccine development. So the way we look at the data is using the sequencing data. We get the genome of the virus across all the infected you know, individuals in the pandemic. And we focus on the genome variation, also on the specific region of the genome, including the proteins and other regions like the, the non-structural uh, proteins. The way we do that, we get this genome vari uh, uh, sequences for all the individuals in our population. We try to uh, cal calculate the variation that explain in each of these uh, sample compared to the other samples, and we try to evaluate and see what those variations we see mean. So here I'm showing a roadmap of how we can calculate, how we can uh, look at the genome variations in a specific regions. In the first row, what you see is the genome variation correlation to other regions of the genome. And we see four regions that are five here, that they are highly correlated to the variation that they, of the genome that explains across the populations. And two of those regions are very interesting. One of them is the uh, spike protein region, which that number you see, 32.5, it says that the variation that we see in the genome of the virus across the population uh, is correlated between the S and the whole genome. And also we see for the NSP3 uh, uh, regions. So the other three regions that you look at, they are yellow, they are a big regions and they have a subsets. That's why we didn't focus too much on those because we expected when you take a big region of the genome and you try to look at how that carries the information that the whole genome takes, it should be highly correlated. So we see here that uh, there are specific places in the genome of the virus, like the S protein, the spike protein, we already know that the facilitate, facilitates the virus, you know, entrance to the human cells. This is highly correlated to uh, non-structural protein three. And those two all together are correlate with the whole genome variation that we see in the population. So as a part of our NSF grant, we develop a approach named OMCLAST. What it does, you give it a set of points. Here the points are the individuals or the strains of the virus. And the three of, when we run it using the information from the three different regions. First, the whole genome of the virus, second, the spike protein, and third, the non-structural protein, we see that those three, they give us the same communities, uh, and that's consistent across all of them. That suggests these, three, uh, these regions are important to be targeted and investigated further. Also, we look at this variation that we calculated across the population to see how those are, uh, are correlated with the epidemiological data. So we didn't have that much information except like sex and age are a good example here that the virus genome doesn't really correlated well with the sex and age as expected. The outcome could you know, relate, but not the genome of the, the variation of the genome. So also in our work, what we are doing, uh, part of it is to integrate the omics data that we measure from infected individual, like proteins or metabolites. We want to see how those information, when we collect them together, tell us information that they are lead us to hypothesis from the data that we can target them. For example, what you are looking at here, there is an approach we are developing named B-test. What it does, you get give it the metabolized information from the patients and the proteins from the patient. And what it tells us, it gives us a block of relationships. How, what are the metabolites that they are related to the proteins in, uh, in the, or infected individuals? Also, we are developing a deep learning approach, which you give it the sequencing data and give, tells you 
you know, in the beginning of when the person get infected, how the severity gonna look like based on the genome of the virus that we get from the infected uh, person. So as you see, we are developing a different, you know, approaches, method deep learning approaches to investigate the omics data. The first focus was on the genome, uh, the viral genome, and now we are moving to the metabolized proteins and try to integrate all this information using the deep learning approach. So here there are uh, several students in my lab and also uh, co PIs from the computational biologist. Uh, Computational Biology Institute at George Washington that they collaborate in this work and is a team effort. So you can learn more about the, our approaches and the COVID-19 uh, results. We post them in a web page in my lab website and also the software that we are developing that you can use for investigating your data. With that, I want to thank you for your attention.